pleased and proud that you have joined us to enjoy this wonderful play written by Deborah Washington. I'd like to sit back, relax, and enjoy emancipation. with no skills or education to help guide them in their new freedom. During the decades after the war, thousands of freedmen were stuck working as sharecroppers or as tenants for their former owners for pitiful wages or no wages at all. And in most cases, earning a standard of living just above slavery itself. Federal assistance, and government policies developed during the reconstruction that were designed to assist blacks during this transition period were short-lived and evaporated within a decade after the Civil War. But as the years passed, something changed. The change occurred in the hearts and minds of former slaves and their descendants. Even though Jim Crow laws and embittered members of the KKK bring death and terror on the Negroes. Led by the vision of Edwin McKay, founder of the first black community of Langston in 1890, the state of Oklahoma became a mecca for black towns and self-reliant communities. 50 by 1920. I hate school. <laughs> but since we have to be here anyway, let me tell you a story. Last weekend, we had a party out behind OB Man's grocery store. Yeah. It was wild. Pookie was trying to show us the latest dance. <laughs> he slipped and fell in the creek. He was completely wet. Oh, wow. <laughs> what I want to know is when you're going to get your stinky shoes out my locker. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I don't care about those stinky shoes. I'm trying to tell you about Pookie Settle down, class, settle down. So, what comes to mind when you think about a town developed by African Americans during a period when they didn't have many resources and were considered inferior and incompetent? Nothing. Because they never like that uh, ever happened. Probably never will. Right. Well, now in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Man, don't know black people live in Tulsa. Right. What does this have to do with economics? Yeah. Black folks ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. uh, don't own much. All all right. Except for probably a few Cadillacs. All right. Oh, Cadillac. As a matter of fact, I'm about to go invest in me some. Uh, Roland, please sit down so that we can continue the lesson. You will see how the lesson connects as we learn about the economic growth of a town. Man, I'm out of here. This lesson has no meaning. Oh. Oh, he hit his head. Oh, he fell down. Is he all right? Run, get him! Journey with me as we learn more about one of these great communities. Tulsa's undeveloped town of Greenwood began to take shape when wealthy black entrepreneurs and businessmen moved in and set up shop. J.D., this is one fine hotel. This is the largest Black-owned and operated hotel in America. <laughs> Look at it. Trimmed and pressed brick. Set on stone slabs. This hotel symbolizes the pride and affluence of Negroes. Well, thank you, girl. I figured Black travelers should have dazzling accommodation.
Federal assistance and government policies developed during the reconstruction that were designed to assist Blacks during this transition period were short-lived and evaporated within a decade after the Civil War. But as the years passed, something changed. The change occurred in the hearts and minds of former slaves and their descendants. Even though Jim Crow laws and embittered members of the KKK bring death and terror on the Negroes. Led by the vision of Edwin McKay, founder of the first black community of Langston in 1890, the state of Oklahoma became a mecca for black towns and self-reliant communities. 50 by 1920. I hate school. <laughs> but since we have to be here anyway, let me tell you a story. Last weekend, we had a party out behind OB Man's grocery store. Yeah. It was wild. Pookie was trying to show us the latest dance. <laughs> he slipped and fell in the creek. He was completely wet. Oh, wow. <laughs> what I want to know is when you're going to get your stinky shoes out my locker. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I don't care about those stinky shoes. I'm trying to tell you about Pookie falling in the creek over behind us. <laughs> <laughs> settle down, class, settle down. So, what comes to mind when you think about a town developed by African Americans during a period when they didn't have many resources and were considered inferior and incompetent? Nothing. Because they never like that uh, ever happened. Probably never will. Right. Well, now, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Man, don't know black people live in Tulsa. Right. <laughs> what does this have to do with economics? Yeah. Black folks ain't got no money. Mm. Uh, don't own much. All uh, right. Except for probably a few Cadillacs. All right. Cadillacs. Cadillacs. As a matter of fact, you're about to go invest in me some. Uh, Roland, please sit down so that we can continue the lesson. You will see how the lesson connects as we learn about the economic growth of a town. Man, I'm out of here. This lesson has no meaning. Oh. Oh, he hit his head. Oh, he fell down. Is he all right? Run, get him! Journey with me as we learn more about one of these great communities. Tulsa's undeveloped town of Greenwood began to take shape when wealthy black entrepreneurs and businessmen moved in and set up shop. JD, this is one fine hotel. This is the largest black owned and operated hotel in America. <laughs> Look at it. Trimmed and pressed brick. Set on stone slabs. This hotel symbolizes the pride and affluence of Negroes. Well, thank you, girl. I figure black travelers should have dazzling accommodations. Dazzling as Hotel Tulsa sitting downtown for white folks. After I amassed me a splendid bank account for my other businesses and was living on the sunny side of the street. Hey, you in the sunny side of the street. <laughs> I figured, why not uh, erect a large hotel in Tulsa exclusively for blacks? I wanted the Stratford to be a monument to the thrift energy and to the business tax to the race in Tulsa and to the race to the state of Oklahoma. Well, you have outdone yourself with this one. This hotel adds credence to Booker T. Washington's description of this district as Black Wall Street. Yeah, that's what he said. And on opening night two months ago, man, the bright lights was flashing and the jazz music was pounding and the guests was doing a fantastic show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did AJ say when he, um... Good morning, gentlemen. Stop in to you. It looks very nice. Hopefully one day I can own a hotel. Good morning. Good man. morning. Uh, if you stay in school, ain't that right? Yeah, get yourself educated. You can have whatever you desire. What's your name? 
Big Rose, right? Oh, yes, I know the Forge very well. Hello, Jamin. Dick, come on, you're on the slope, man. Yes, you're going to make us miss the show at the Dreamland. I'm here talking business with Mr. Stratford, and you two are worried about a movie. Ma'am, she doesn't have time to be dealing with the likes of you. Yes, come on, you know I have to be home at a certain time. One of these days, you two are going to wish you had listened to me, especially when you see me driving in that new Chalmers. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Stratford. Have the run. Yes, sir. Well, some strange kids. <laughs> uh, by the way, did AJ say when he'd be back in town? I believe he's supposed to be arriving sometime late morning. You know, I sure hope his investigation paid off. Yeah, me too. We worked too hard to get what we offer white folks to come along and destroy without any repercussions. The town of Greenwood has come a long way since those early days of those large tracts of undeveloped land. Yeah, my main reason for coming to the territory was opportunity. And I must say that I was impressed with the ideas and vision of Edwin McCabe in building black towns and self-reliant black communities. Yeah, yeah. After resigning from my <clears throat> presidential appointment under President Grover Cleveland, I decided to strike out on my own and head west. Just being able to get away from the oppressed conditions in the southern states was reason enough for me. I hear you, Jerry. You know, when I heard about opportunities for banks, and about McCabe finding the first black community in Langston, I figured it was worth a try. You see, I was born in a slavery in South Kentucky in 1861. Father Julius Caesar, you know, most folks call him JC, set an example that defines and strengthened me from birth. Name me John the Baptist. But I go by JB for the same reason most blacks during that time. You know, the single letters precluded the white folks from addressing me by my first name. That is surely true. J.B., such informality was considered disrespectful. Some black parents even named their children Mr. or Colonel to ensure they would always have a title of respect. Yeah. My brother was named General Gurley by his father. <laughs> yeah, they always found a way. You know, my father learned to read and write from Master's daughter. He then forged the master's name on the pass and fled from the plantation. You know that pass got him all the way to the Stratford, Ontario? And once there, took the variation of the name for his own, and that's how the Stratford came to be. Nah, he didn't, J.B. You mean to tell me he made it all the way to Canada? Yes, he did. And then returned to Kentucky prior emancipation, secured some more legal documents, and declared his family free. You know, girly, living in slavery of any kind is inhumane, degrading, and costly. That is to the millions of lives it affects. It is a cruel institution. Now, that's the truth. And they call it the peculiar institution. <laughs> yeah. But like my father, I wanted to be educated. I knew that education was the key that would unlock the door to my success. Now, it wasn't an easy road, but... My determination and yearning to be something other than a slave made that road a little less bumpy. I graduated from Oberlin College in Ohio at the age of 38. I received my law degree from Indiana Law School in Indianapolis. <laughs> and there I met Bertie, my first wife. She died after bearing me three sons and a daughter. And years later, I married Augusta. And after a hotel I owned in Alexandria, Indiana went under, I figured, why not move out west and start fresh? You know, girl, when you're starting at rock bottom, the only way to go is up, because if you let yourself get any lower, you might as well dig your own grave. And that one thing that I knew and believed was that Negro's best chance of success would be by pooling our resources and working together to support one another's businesses. I agree. And when McCabe's representatives came south on their recruiting mission to try and convince blacks to come to the Twin Territories and to populate the region, I wanted to be part of that great migration. Talk was all over the South about an all-Black state. Negroes from Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas were attracted to the idea, and an influx of Blacks into the territory began. Now, of course, some Negroes were attracted by the ideas of intermarrying with the Creeks and Seminoles <laughs> and being invited into the tribe. <laughs> uh-huh. So they could have Indian in their family? <laughs> <laughs> you got it. That's right. 
Hey, whatever their reasons for coming, one thing is for sure. You know, blacks from the South were tired of being disenfranchised, intimidated, segregated, and lynched by whites who thought they were superior. And it sure feels good to have something to call our own. I'm glad we bought up all these large tracts of real estate and initiated the town of Greenwood. Yes, indeed. The subdivisions are selling and businesses are continuing to open. Black Tulsa has taken shape. And I'm willing to fight to the death before I let anybody come and destroy what I established. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what we feel about. It. <laughs> Just the same, bro. Uh, right. What you got there, AJ? Warrants issued today for burning Negro homes. When a black man named Aaron Wardlow shot and killed Dewey's police chief. Walter L. Moore on the night of August 11th, 1918, the crime aroused the white people of Dewey to such a state of anger that they proceeded to wipe out. Wipe out? Now that's an understatement. Listen, listen to this. Thanks. Uh, I can't. You tried to wipe out that Negro settlement in West Dewey? Yeah, thanks to the involvement of Tulsa Star Publisher. A.J. Smitherman and Oklahoma's Governor Robert B. Williams, many of the men whom warrants were served in a prominent community of 36 members of the white community, including Dewey's own mayor, were arrested and charged with race riot crimes. Finally, I hope they'll be held accountable for their actions. I sure hope so. The liars and home that were destroyed in Dewey will take years to uh, uh, reveal. Exactly. That's why we need to make sure that our community stays tight. We must keep the dollar in the community and continue to trade hand in hand. So if a resident's home accidentally burned down, it can be rebuilt within a few weeks. You know, Jim Crow laws have forced us to become dependent on one another. With the expansion of Greenwood's business district, once the dollars come into Greenwood, it stays in Greenwood for as long as we can keep. We must become a self-sufficient community. Now, what we have done by establishing this community is proved that we as black people can create a successful infrastructure. With all the black owned businesses that opened up in the community, that dollar circulates 36 to 100 times before it leaves the community. It's the businesses that are the economic engine of Greenwood, and we have to do everything we can to maintain. Oh, boy. he's about to get started. Come on, AJ. You know, as well as I do, white folks ain't happy with what they see going on in Greenwood. A lot of them white folks have come back from the war and they poor. And when they look over that white picket fence and see into our community, see they realize that we got something better than them, that the community is flourishing, they ain't coming to congratulate us. Hey, look, 35 blocks of black owned businesses, homes, churches, schools, libraries, restaurants, grocery stores, beauty parlor, two movie theaters, a hospital, bank, post office, and a bus system. Should we go on? Oh, well, let's not forget about the law officers and our own newspaper. Yes, sir. Uh, but, <laughs> but I don't think it, uh, we have to worry about what happened in Dewey, happened in Greenwood. What reason would they have to uh, torch people's homes? AJ, white folks don't oh. need no reason to destroy our property, our families, or even our lives. They do it because they feel they can. The city even passes laws and ordinances to try to prevent us from voting. Yeah, you, you were right about that. Laws were requiring us to uh, travel separate coaches. An ordinance that forbid people of either race to reside on any block where three quarters or more of the residents are of the other race. All of which I believe are linked to Oklahoma denial of basic rights to blacks. And I don't know about you, but I'm sick of all of the angry rallies, published editorials and protests that have little or no effect seem to increase racial tension and violence. Now that's the truth. And as a matter of fact, we will be in attendance at that next commission meeting to address some of these issues. Here we are, successful businessmen. AJ, owner of the Star newspaper. JB, a lawyer and real estate owner. And me, a real estate owner as well. And still considered inferior because of the color of our skin. You know, and on top of everything else, we have to fight off mobs who continually try to intimidate us with lynching to prove that their race is superior. Yes, 
we will be at that meeting. Get him. You must remember who we are, what we're capable of. I, I have never felt inferior to no one. White, black, red, yellow, or otherwise. We as blacks have to uh, suffer as much and has many shortcomings, but they haven't broken us. Look at what we've accomplished. We built up our own town to our specifications, yes. educated our youth. That's right. And what's that saying that Principal E.W. Woods is always saying? What's that? Oh, yeah, here it is. You're as good as 99% of the people and better than the rest. <laughs> good day, gentlemen. I was just out for my afternoon walk in meditation and happened to notice you in here. Sure is a beautiful day today. Good morning, Reverend. Yeah, good morning. Good yeah. morning. Hey, Reverend, how is that construction on the church coming along? I'm happy to report that the construction is going well and on schedule to be completed in three years, oh. April of 1921, to be exact. Okay. I thank God for how he worked out our financial situation and getting that unsecured loan from a private donor was a blessing. Imagine that this day and age. Yes, sir. He always looks out for his children. Yes, he does. You know, I consider Mount Zion the church that faith built. Yes. yes, indeed. Although we had to endure a lot over the years, but it was faith that kept us grounded. Well, I'm going to continue on my walk. You, you gentlemen have a good day. Yes, sir. And I hope to see you in the service on Sunday. Yes, Reverend. Okay, Reverend. That's a fine example of a kind of standard and religion that is ingrained in us. We have to stick together and keep fighting with, with our minds. We have to advocate for ourselves and break away from the injustice that attempts to dehumanize us. Fellas, fellas, we need to get over to the town of Bristol to prevent the, the lynching of a black prisoner. Oh. An armed group of black farmers have rallied together, but they need our support. Oh, uh, here we go again. I declare that they are a member of our group is Bob and Tulsa. These streets will be bathed in blood. GP, let's, let's go to Grisco and try to stand down the mobs of whites. By no means can we allow them to list that prisoner. Oh, Come on, we can take my beat. All right, let's go. Standing down mobs of whites in an attempt to stop them from lynching Negroes happened quite often in the black community. The community was determined to prevent the lynching of blacks but didn't always agree about the tactics to be used. Despite all of the injustices working against them, Greenwood continued to thrive and businesses continued to grow. J.B. Stratford and others often spoke out against unfair laws and ordinances and fought for equal treatment of blacks. Although the economy of Greenwood allowed them to be self-sufficient and provided the resources they needed, they still demanded fair treatment and refused to be deprived of their rights. Over 60% of the U.S. colored population served whites as domestic workers, restaurant cooks, boot blacks, and laborers. Wages were brought back to Greenwood and spent with black grocers, black lumber yards, black theaters, and a myriad of other black businesses. Once in the community, the dollar circulated 36 to 100 times. In other words, a single dollar might have stayed in Greenwood for almost a year. As time went on, Greenwood continued to flourish despite the laws that worked against them and the whites who sought to destroy them. Blacks remain hopeful and diligent in their efforts. Three years later, April 4th, 1921, Mount Zion Baptist Church holds its first service at the recently built structure. Reverend R. A. Whitaker is preaching a sermon on faith. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Let us rejoice 
Mm -hmm. And be glad in it. Oh, didn't God do it for us? Yes, it is. When I look back to where we used to be, mm -hmm. when we were put out of our business, when we were trying to figure out where were we going to hold our next service? Yes, Lord. When nothing seems to be going right, mm -hmm. we got a little discovery. Come on. We couldn't see no way out. Yeah. But the God of our refuge mm -hmm. and our strength yeah. Come on, proved to be our very present help yeah. in our times of trouble. Yes, Lord. Now, we were able to raise a portion of the money mm -hmm. for this beautiful building. Yeah. Oh, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. We kept on work. Kept yeah. on work. We kept on praying. Yes, Lord. We became weary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a little more discouraged. Come on. We were hard pressed, hard pressed. on every side, yeah. but not crushed. Not yeah. crushed. And just when yeah. Yeah. we wanted to throw in the towel. Yeah. Yeah. God work it out. Yes, it That's why yeah. you can't give up on God. Yeah. You got to hold on, hold on. and keep the faith. Yeah. He will yeah. work it out. Yeah. Keep believing. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Believe in yourself yeah. and believe in God. Yeah. I'm reminded yeah. of the bumblebee Come on. when everything mm -hmm. seemed to tell the bee. You can't fly. Glory. You'll never get off the ground. Yeah. Your body's too heavy mm -hmm. and your wings are too weak. Yeah. Sometimes our burden wears down yes, 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 and the load is too heavy yes. for our wings. Yes. And Ooh. flight, oh Lord, oh, Lord, just don't seem possible. Yes. Oh, but God, yes, God, how many of you know we serve a yes. mighty God? Yes. in Greenwood and the success of a group of Muscogee black men who stormed a city jail and liberated a black man. You know, I was thinking the other day, and that Muscogee liberation was the right thing to do. Uh, I don't know about that, J.B. I don't, I don't know. Hey, you know, but those Republicans are something else. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, I just, uh, Stop through and figured I'd take a load off my feet as I had to drop off groceries to one of my customers. How you doing, old man? How you doing, old Good, 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 good. You know, I was thinking about that city commission meeting we attended the other day. Do you really think they heard us? I don't know if they paid any attention to them old fellas, but I know they sat up and, and, and took notice uh, when J.B. spoke. Yeah, yeah, especially when he started talking about those Republicans. Yeah, now, nah, come <laughs> on, fellas. You know they weren't, right? Here I am, a Republican, who worked hard in helping the white, white Republicans in the last campaign, and now that I haven't helped you get elected, you going to insult me by passing ordinances to keep us segregated? We should just keep, up, keep fighting and, and not give up, give up hope. We don't need or any ordinances to segregate us. We segregated ourselves, but the difference is ordinances make segregation mandatory instead of voluntary. And these are the type of denigrations we need to continue to fight against. Well said, JB, well said. You know, that John McShane jailbreak the other week is the talk of the town these days. It seems like every other day these whites are trying to find a cause to lynch a black man. The success of that group of Muscogee black men who stormed that city jail and liberated John McShane mm. from being lynched is justified in my eyes. And I continue to say that we must be vigilant if a black man is in danger of being lynched. 
No, no, I agree with you, JB. But but them boys showing up struck a chord when they when they shot and killed that white deputy sheriff in the in the process of freeing that young man. Casualty of war. The defiance of of the folks of Greenwood has whites up in arms. Can't you feel the tension in the air? It was justice in my eyes. Now it's our legal right to take aggressive action towards lynching. Those men prevented the lynching, and I feel that the news should be spread throughout Greenwood. That's right. So JB and I had already drafted an article about the Muskogee uh, event, so we can spread the news to people in Greenwood. Now I don't know about it being a uh, uh, legal right in the eyes of the white man, uh, but something radical me measures needs to be taken. But the tension in the air is causing AC. AC. We got to protect our lives, our homes our families, our businesses, and all that we have established here in Greenwood and in other towns. We are just as competent, if not more competent than the folks who look down on us. Are we supposed to feel ashamed or worthless for the rest of our lives because someone believes we are or have tried to ingrain it in our minds? Look, we cannot be worthless or ignorant if we put a whole town together. A city that generates more revenue in a day than most folks in a lifetime. Now, we didn't inherit our fortune, AC. We worked our fingers to the bone to have something we could call our own. To have pride and take uh, in who we are as a people. And to live on the sunny side of the street. Yeah, all right. You're <laughs> the sunny side of the street again. <laughs> I excuse me, I'm in search of Dr. A.C. Jackson. My wife is very ill and in need of surgery. I was sent by the Mayo Brothers. Uh, I'm Dr. Jackson. The Mayo Brothers say that you're the best there is. And I'm willing to pay whatever it costs. Well, I can't make you any promises, but, but, but stop by my office in the morning and, and we can talk. Well, thank you, sir. You gentlemen have a good day. Oh, my God. Let me look out this window. Yeah. Because it must be a full moon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anybody want to grab a bite to eat? I have to deliver these groceries and get back to the store before my brother starts wondering about my whereabouts. I'm going to head back to the office. I'll talk with you later. Hey, let's walk on down to Greenwood and uh, see Presley's place. That sounds good. I can stop by John Auto Shop and have a chicken get my view. Sounds like a plan to me. Let me just find my umbrella. Oh, I think it must have got, oh, got it. Let's, let's just go. You know, this sun show is beating down on us today. It is I wish I did find my umbrella. Umbrella? Why do you need an umbrella? Sun won't bury you. Come on, KB. Keep walking. He's just trying to get a response from me. Oh, he's about to get one in a minute. As a matter of fact, the sun can't burn that skin, boy. Come on, KB. Is that worth it? You might want to go and deliver that ice before you be needing it for yourself. What? You think you can put a threat on me? JB, no. Oh, 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 if you oh, kill this oh, white man, oh, you will be mine. Oh, oh, get off of him. Oh, get off of him. Oh, oh, I warned him. You heard me warn him. Jesus Christ, JB. Jesus Christ. Needless to say, the delivery man survived. J.B. Stratford was later acquitted of charges, stating he violated the Oklahoma Jim Crow laws. However, racial tensions continued to rise as whites were not happy with the affluent black community or the wealth they had accumulated. And they were certainly not fond of and became less enchanted with the life of J.B. Stratford. One month later, Thursday, May 26, 1921. The Greenwood District of Tulsa flourished in spite of segregation and Jim Crow laws. Nicknamed Black Wall Street, Greenwood had become an economic powerhouse. It housed an extraordinary business center that included banks, hotels, cafes, 
movie theaters, were hair salon, not and temporary home, and became less Greenwood residents the life enjoyed many luxuries that their white neighbors did not, including one month later, indoor plumbing, Thursday, and a remarkable school system that superbly educated black children. As a matter of fact, I'm headed over to one of those businesses right now to get a little uh, touch up on my hair. Girl, did you see her skirt on me? Girl, did we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. 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 She'll be in a little later before it gets too busy with the ladies wanting their hair done just right for tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it'll be busy. It's May's day off. Mm -hmm. And they all want to come and get all gussied up so they can stroll down Greenwood and just relax and enjoy themselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they deserve a little unwind time. Because after working with white folks all week, you need a little time to relax your mind to yeah. keep from killing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lula, your theater and confectionery will be busy as well. Those young folks love your place. Yes, yes, yes. They sure keep us busy. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say, I like to see them enjoying themselves with all that dancing and swinging that they do. Yeah. Oh, I don't know where they get that energy. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> me either. But I just want them to have that same energy and enthusiasm when it comes to their schooling in church services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, ladies, that reminds me. We need to meet Tuesday to discuss expanding the role of Mount Zion in the community. We do. Yes, the Mount Zion is a splendid structure since the completion of construction last month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a long time coming, but to God be the glory. There has been some show, enough praising the Lord and things going on yes. in each service. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord and Pastor Reverend Whitaker. He preached a powerful message yes, on faith last Sunday. Yes, ooh, 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 ooh. It was very, very inspirational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, let's meet after church next service, next Sunday after service, okay? Oh, and then that way we won't interfere with them young people's prom. Right. <laughs> right about that. <laughs> and I recognize there can be a lot of influence in the community. Mm -hmm. All right, Emma, you're all set, girls. Oh, Emma, that looks good mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you get home, don't you start bothering the mistress. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, lady. Morning. I was on my way downtown to shine some shoes. Just wanted to stop in and say hello. Well, if it ain't Dick Rowland. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your schooling, Dick? You're missing out on some much needed instruction, young man. Ah, uh, Miss mm. Little, I ain't missing out on much. I plan on being a business owner just like you all, so I can wear all the fine and fancy things I want. Boy, have you lost your mind? Even business owners need an education, and that's not a good reason for starting a business. You're in high school now, and you need to be more responsible. Yeah. All right, Miss Little. Thanks for the advice. Mm -hmm. Well, how's your aunt doing, Dick? She's doing fine. You are still helping her out in the store, aren't you? I do when I can. I'm making my own money now, so I don't have much time. Uh, Miss Strafford, I hear that the Booker T. Washington trial will happen in the Chandelier Ballroom at the Strafford Hotel next Tuesday. And at the high school band will be playing. Well, you know an awful lot about what's going on in the school for someone who hasn't been present. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> World travels fast around this time. I'll talk to you ladies later. I best get going. The work. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I sure hope he had stayed in school this year. You know, he dropped out a few months last year and returned with basketball season started. Mm -hmm. Then, once football season ended this year, he dropped out again. Mm -hmm. One thing for sure, though, I best be ready for those young ladies Tuesday morning. They are excited about their money. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes. They sure are. You know what? It's the day after. It's on uh, the day after Memorial Day, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Yes. And you know, there's been a lot of chatting down in the confectionery yes. about who's caught and who. And who is taking who to the prom? Oh, I see. <laughs> yes, these young folks are excited about their prom. Yes, but for tonight, May's day off, 
I am but tight with all these ladies wanting their hairdos just right for tonight. <laughs> well, ladies, I only have a few minutes to get a bite to eat with you. And before my big rush happens and my new stylist arrives, I'm so excited. <laughs> How about we go down to you and Presley's restaurant and get something to eat? Yeah, you know what? That sounds fine to me. I'm sure Presley can cook up some of his signature smother steak oh, with oh, rice and brown gravy. Come on, let's go for the gravy. Eat. Yes. Oh, come on. Can't wait to get that gravy. Yeah. Yes. Thursday was considered maid's day off. Domestic workers dressed in their fanciest clothes and prepared to stroll down the two-box section of Greenwood Avenue. The maids and the chauffeur, the gardeners and the men promenaded around for hours, moving in and out of restaurants, jazz joints and pool halls, and strolling past jewelry stores, fine hotels, barber shops, skating rinks, all owned and run by black. The delightful aroma of fried chicken, barbecue ribs, and collard greens filled the air, mixing with notes of jazz and blues that poured into the street. Thursday nights were filled with excitement, walking and flirting and courting, spending money, and then walking some more. Although, on occasion, some young men fought, as the moonshine settled in, but by far, those nights were happy times for Black. Sunday morning, May 29, 1921. Church service at Mount Zion Baptist Church continues to be uplifted. The Lord invites us to call on him, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, yeah, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. yes. Take my yoke upon yes. you and learn from me, yes. learning to lean on him yes. and Come to on. depend and rest and rely on him. Mm -hmm. In every situation yes. is crucial in your spiritual journey. Yeah. God bless you and God be with you yeah. until we meet again. Yeah. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. keep leaning yeah. on the everlasting arm yeah. and enjoy your Memorial Day holiday yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And God bless you. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting Ooh, good evening, ladies. Good evening. So glad you can make it this evening. Woo, but didn't pass the preach a good word this morning. Yes. Ooh, now I don't want to hold you too long. I know folks are preparing for tomorrow's holiday or relax. <laughs> I wish that would relax. I'll be at the hotel preparing for tomorrow for a uh, high school prom. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that reminds me. Pastor wants us to adjust our focus and see how the church can help some of our young high school students, the ones who seem like they no longer want to get an education, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or that they need more support in various coursework. Yes. yes, you know, I, I'm a bit concerned about Big Roller, who's all together just dropped out of school and, and trying to make a living shine the shoes. Oh, wow. Well, you know, he's just one of quite a few. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we should start with a tutoring program to offer support to some of those who, who just aren't making a grade. Yes, yes. I'm sure Mr. Wood would be willing to give us a list of students who could use the extra support. Mm -hmm. We can then visit homes and, and get some group started. Yeah, you know, that's a good idea. And you know, um, I'll make an appointment with Mr. Woods and um, for next week, and, and we can just go from there. Yeah, that mm -hmm. sounds great. Uh, what's next on the agenda? Hmm. We will begin with our outreach program this Wednesday for the sick and shut in. Okay. Tuesday, I will provide you with a list of homes 
scheduled to be visited with names of each person to visit the home. Now we will continue to provide food and clothing for those in need, correct? Yes, yes, so ladies, please, please remember to share information about donations for the food and the clothing drive. Well, that's all I have on the agenda for today, ladies. Anyone else have anything they want to share or add? No, I have to head home and get my rest because I'll be pretty busy tomorrow. Now, just in case any of you have any spare time on your hands, mm -hmm. come on by the hotel and help, help me set up for the prom. All right. All right. Well, you know what? I want you ladies to enjoy your memorials day. All right. <laughs> yes. All right. All right, ladies. We'll see you later. Thank you for coming. Monday morning, May 30th, 1921, Memorial Day. Patriotic music can be heard coming from the downtown district of Tulsa. While families lined Main Street to see the large Memorial Day parade march by and American flags waved, patriots proudly wore their red, white, and blue outfits, the residents of the town of Greenwood prepared for their own celebration to honor those who died during the Civil War. We are in the Stratford Hotel with Dick Rowland and J.B. Stratford. Good morning, Mr. Stratford. Good morning. Happy Memorial Day. I stopped by to admire this fine establishment and shield myself from the heavy rains out there. Got me thinking, I need to go out and build myself a nut. Well, maybe so. But the rain sure haven't deterred people from heading downtown to see the parade. But I'm sure to clear up soon and temperature and spike to a humid 90 degrees. So, uh, I hear you're not returning to school. Yeah, I'm making good money shining shoes down at the pool hall on 3rd and May. Shoe shines cost a dime, but the tips earn me enough money to buy this diamond ring. I see. Sporting this diamond ring has earned me the nickname Diamond Dick. I've heard. Well, I have to get to work. After all this rain, there will be shoes to be shined and money to be made. Stop by some time. I'll give you a free shine. I'll do that. Morning, JB. Morning, Doc. Morning, good morning. Morning, Rev. Good morning. Hey, Doc, how did that surgery go? It was very successful. She's going to be just fine. It just blesses my heart to know that out of all the doctors and surgeons they could have chosen, he selected you. Who would ever thought that a Negro doctor would be asked to perform surgery on a white woman? Now imagine that this day and age. AC, you have transcended the color line. You know, the Mayo brothers consider you to be the most able black surgeon in America. Were you nervous? Nah, I'm just willing to help anyone who is sick in any form. I believe that's the way God for, intended for it to be. Being of service to others. Maybe you're right. Mm. So you gentlemen headed downtown to the parade? Oh, no, sir. Too many people and too much movement for me. This is a day of relaxation for me. Plus, the rain is stopping. That sun is moving in. It's getting ready to heat up out there. So I'm going to head on out before the sun gets too hot. Uh, well, enjoy your day. I'm going to be here waiting for Augusta. Should be down here shortly to finish preparing the ballroom for the Booker T. Washington High School prom. Oh, yeah, that's happening tomorrow night. That's just wonderful. Oh, to be young again. Hey, hey, I am young. <laughs> I can hang with the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to head on out. Hey, Rev, how's John Auto business coming along? Everything is just fine. You know, he's been having a lot of white folks come by with their vehicle, wanting him to look at that engine, change oil and change the parts. Imagine that, this day and age. Yeah, I heard. You know, them white folks sure know how to humble themselves when they need something from you. Yes, indeed. I had one fella stop by and address John as Mr. Williams. Huh? You know, he had to look twice to make sure he didn't see some color in that man's face. Mm. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Ain't that something. Hey, what about that three-story building he built? Well, what's he doing with that third floor? Well, you know, he's renting the third floor out to various attorneys 
He and his family resides on the second floor, you know. And now that confectionery that's on the ground floor has become the heart of Greenwood social life. Yes, it has. You know, I saw the ad in Tulsa Star. The Williams Confectionery, headquartered for sweets as well as ice cream, cold drinks, cigars, tobacco, and <laughs> fresh butter every day. <laughs> Yeah, JB. You know, he's come a long way since he left Mississippi. And we thank God for his blessing. Yes, indeed. You know, Augusta and I are going to have to catch a show at the Dreamland Theater they've built as well. Is he still running two shows tonight? Yes, he is. You know he's going to have a Charlie Chaplin film with a live band passing through there soon. Mm. You be sure and bring Augusta here. I sure will. Meanwhile, at the shoe shine stand, Dick Rowland and Robert Fairchild finishes shining the shoes of their white clients and discusses Dick's future. Neither could have anticipated the dreadful future lurking nearby. Thank you. Come again. So, what's your plan for the future? Did you want me going back to school anymore? Thank you. Have a good day, sir. Uh, you know I always got a plan. There's a lot of money to be made out here. I plan on saving enough money to start my own business. Maybe a grocery store like OB Man or a bus charter like Dr. Simon Berry. I mean, I make pretty good money shining shoes, but I don't plan on doing this for the rest of my life. I'm too sharp a dresser for that. I'm going to run and pick up a pair of shoes and use the bathroom in the Drexel building. We'll find, finish this conversation when I get back. All right. Now, let me get you signed up. Got me a date. Can't be late. Ah! Tell me, Dick. What's going on? Where are you going to? Later that evening, we join Augusta, JB, and Smitherman at the Stratford Hotel. Jimmy, I saw Danny's son, Dick, running down the street like he was running for his life. I hope everything is all right. Oh, I'm sure it is. He probably just forgot something for his shoe shine business. He's a good kid. Smooth talker, but a good kid. Probably right. Well, I'm going to go down into Shannon's room and put the finishing touches on things so that we're all set for the prom tomorrow night. Okay. JB, trouble might be brewing. What kind of trouble, AJ? The sound that Diamond Dick tried to sexually assault a white girl in the elevator of the Drexel building early today. In broad daylight? Nice bull. Only a black man with a death wish would try to rape or attack a white girl in broad daylight. Has he been arrested? No arrest. Yeah. Well, it must have not have been too serious. What's wrong? Uh, uh, good, good evening to you, um, Ms. Augusta. Good evening. Good evening. Nothing, honey. Just tired and discussing some business with AJ. Well, you two can finish this meeting in the morning. Let's head home for some dinner. Tuesday, May 31st, 1921. Booker T. Washington High School students busily prepared their wardrobes and hair for the prom. Yet, none of them could imagine the event that would change their lives and cancel their prom. We see Robert Fairchild and Bernice Sims talking about Dick's arrest. I picked up my suit for the prom tonight and over some talking about Diamond Game this morning. I heard about that. People are talking about he tried to rape a white girl. One minute we're shining shoes and talking about our future. He went to pick up a pair of shoes, and next thing I knew, he was high time past me like he was one of his life. I don't know what could have happened, but what I do know is that he didn't do what they say. I just can't believe it. Hopefully, everything works out. I'm sure it will. Hey, are you still singing at the prom? Of course. As a matter of fact, I'll be rehearsing at the theater shortly. Come on, let's go grab a coke at the confectionery before heading to the theater. Meanwhile, at the Stratford Hotel, A.J. Smitherman and O.W. Gurley Enter and hands JB a newspaper. 
It was the afternoon edition of the Celtic Tribune, as announced on the front page. What you got there, AJ? Nab Negro for attacking girl in elevator. A Negro delivery boy who gave his name to the public as Diamond Dick, but was identified as Dick Rowland, was arrested on South Greenwood this morning by officers Carmel and Pack, charged with attempting to assault a 17-year-old white elevator girl in the Drexel building yesterday. He will be tried in municipal court this afternoon on a state charge. Oh, my God. Now I see it. They found a way, girlie. They found a way. Look at the Tribune is doing. It's transforming a dubious, far-fetched elevator encounter into a racist saga that's guaranteed to send an electric charge to Royal Tulsa. This is serious, JB. I mean, the girl is saying she noticed Dick a few minutes before the attempted assault, looking up and down the hallway as if to see if there was anyone in sight. Uh -huh. And then a few minutes later, he entered the elevator and attacked her, scratching her hands and face and tearing her clothes. You know, it's fabricated stories like this that are inflammatory enough to cause a small spark to blossom into a raging fire. Yeah. I'll tell you, so many ain't right about this whole thing. That I was just a cover-up orchestrated by the city of Lee that to accomplish whatever hidden agenda they, they have expired. So there's, there's talk, there's talk that a white lynch mob is going to take matters into their own hands and kill Dick Rowland. We can't let that happen. There's a group of armed white men congregating outside the jail, and some younger militant black men have joined the crowd in order to protect Dick Rowland. Oh, my God, let's go. I'm going down to the courthouse to speak to Sheriff McCullough myself and let him know that he cannot allow this young man to be lynched. We'll go with him. Oh, I'm going to head over to the church and inform my wife and the rest of the women. Let them know to get home. At the courthouse steps, Sheriff McCullough, Gurley, Obi Man, and mobs of whites and blacks have congregated. We hear there's supposed to be a lynching tonight. Gurley, there won't be any lynching as long as I'm sheriff. If you keep your folks away, there won't be any, keep the folks away from you, there won't be any trouble. I can assure you that they'll stay away. Now listen, fellas, we need to let the sheriff handle this. Getting all wired up is not going to help the situation. So please return to your homes. Dick Rowland is safe. Are you sure about this, girlie? Yes, yes. Please return to Greenwood. Dick Rowland will be fine. All right. Come on, let's go. You'll be fine. All right. All right. All right. Back at the Stratford Hotel, JB and AJ Smithman are speaking to a crowd of men. I'm not surprised that whites might try to mention a liberal or a member of our race because of their bitter feelings against our group. I said it before and I'll say it again. The day a member of our group is mobbed in Tulsa, these streets will be bathed in blood. And if I can't get anyone to go with me, I will go single-handed and empty my automatic into that mob and resign myself to that fate. Yeah, 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 baby. Now, yeah. I know that you're anxious and upset, but gentlemen, I insist you only go to the courthouse only if you know for sure that Dick Rowland's life is in jeopardy or if the sheriff calls for your help. Be sober and wait until the sheriff calls for us. Please wait until the sheriff calls for us. We retaliate against oppression, but we don't start trouble. We don't want things to spire out of control. It's important that white has to go to the courthouse. Then listen to me. Please remain sober. Wait until the sheriff calls for us. Okay, please. We have to stop the men from going up there. AJ, I ain't going back up there unless the sheriff calls for me. Hey, what happened? Where is everyone going? Someone announced that the wife had stormed the courthouse. That's not true. I just left there. You guys better prepare yourselves. At the courthouse, Sheriff McCullough stands at the top of the steps as black men approaches and the rioters become more agitated. 
I'm the sheriff of Tulsa County. Now you may listen to me. Go home before a lot of people get spoiled. There are no minutes coming up here to pray around with guns like that. If you're law-abiding people, you'll go home before real trouble starts. We'll go home when we get that Negro boy you want to lynch. That's right. We ain't going anywhere without him. No one is going to be lynched here. Not going to be a charge against the young man. The white girl has admitted he did not harm her. So she says she was nervous and scared. So she screamed when he grabbed her arm. That's all there is to the case. She's a very nervous person, but she's not going to press charges because no harm was done. So go on now. I give you my word, the Negro will be released in the morning. If there is no charge, why don't you turn him over to us now? I can't release him tonight. It isn't possible. Why not? Because he's telling a lie. If we leave him here, he's a goner. They'll hang him high as judgment day. Listen to me. No one is going to hang anybody from this jail. But I can't turn him over to you tonight. Only a judge can do that in the morning. We can't give in to lawlessness. So go home before trouble starts. Praying around with these guns is against the law. Violence is easy to stop, but hard to stop. Look up at them windows. See them gun barrels pointing at you? <laughs> they will cut down the first poison that makes a move to take this courthouse over. Now go home before a lot of people get shot. You have to tell the truth. Come on, please. As the blacks start to back off, a white man approaches OB man who is carrying a revolver. Nigger, what are you doing with that pistol? I'm gonna use it if I need to. No, you give it to me. Like hell I will. Negroes are trying to take over the city. They came looking for trouble by coming into town with guns and trying to take over. They started the trouble, but we were right to finish. So they will never forget this night. As the Negroes of Tulsa and other Oklahoma cities fought to pursue their God-given rights and the federal constitution's guarantee of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, they encountered those who sought to maintain the way America operated, thus denying them emancipation from an established system that long ago excluded them. Resentful, unprogressive whites were willing to destroy one of America's most striving, bustling, and wealthy Negro towns to ensure that business in Greenwood abided by the established American system. No one knows if the gunshot was accidental or if it was a warning shot. At any rate, it was the catalyst that set the riot in motion. The riot continued into the following day. Wednesday, June 1st, 1921, Dr. A.C. Jackson opens his front door and walks out his house with his hands raised and in, in an effort to surrender. A group of menacing whites approaches him. Here I am. I'm willing to go with you to the convention hall. Hey, that's Dr. Jackson. Don't hurt him. He is a respected doctor in the community. Why don't you escort him to safety? Now let's do dirt down that bird down that knee church. <laughs> Beneath Sims and her moms are startled by the rioting and the mob and urgently make plans to leave. Beneath, come on, we have to go. The white people are killing the colored folk. Huh? What happened? Come on, we have to get out of here. Wait, I have to get my dress. Leave it. Come on, girl. Blacks were met on all sides with machine guns and other deadly weapons. They attempted to escape, but to no avail. They were killed in large numbers as they tried to flee to safety. 
Whites looted and burned homes and businesses. They backed large trucks up to homes and businesses and removed everything of value. Furniture, large pianos, expensive paintings, even the silverware. They removed personal items found on persons, money, jewelry, watches. And the Mount Zion Baptist Church, which had only been standing for 58 days, was burned to the ground. The Stratford Hotel became a refuge for black families. We are inside the Stratford Hotel. Look out there. Look what's happening out there. They are lining the people up. Oh my gosh. With their hands raised above their heads slowly, herding them out of Greenwood like cattle. This is worse than the Exodus. JB, I'm going to leave you. If we get trapped here, uh, we'll be killed. If we leave now, maybe we have a chance for our lives. Oh, Papa, can't we go too? I intend to protect my hotel. If you want to go with the crowd, then go. JB, the state militia promised to protect your hotel in exchange for your surrender. Am I to believe that? Look what they have done. They have systematically shut down everything. They burned every car. They burned every home, house by house and block by block. The telephone lines have been cut. The telegraph lines have been cut. They even blocked the railroad leading into Greenwood. We have no way to communicate. And you expect me to believe that they're going to protect my hotel? JB, we have to believe in, in, in someone. Baby, come on. Let me take you to a place of, of, of safety. It's not safe for you to be here. If you can guarantee my hotel will not be burnt, I'll go with you. The state militia promised you your hotel would not be burnt. You used it as a, a refuge. Where are we headed? To the convention hall, where all the other Negroes are, are being housed. To the convention hall? So they sent the National Guard to rescue the Blacks? But in reality, we are further victimized and we are being led out of a district, a district that we built, I built, with these hands, these Black hands. We weren't bothering white folks. We were playing by the rules, their rules. We built our own town and we didn't infringe upon the rights and privileges of whites. But they found a way. They found a way. You know, I sure wouldn't mind being Dick Rowland right now. He's the safest black man in Tulsa right now. Greenwood was permanently altered. The city was changed forever. Nearly 50 square blocks have been burned to the ground. In less than 24 hours, a black promised land had been turned into a smoldering wasteland by white mob. Back at Carver High School, Roland slowly regains consciousness and shares a strange dream. Man, Roland, are you, you good? Is he all right? Yeah. Roland, are you all right? Fine, Mr. Woods. I just had the weirdest dream about being in Oklahoma and having a diamond ring. <laughs> <laughs> and a riot broke out, and it was horrible how this thriving black community was destroyed. I mean, black folks had money. Oh, are we going to learn about that, Mr. Wood? Yeah. 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 We all learn about Yes. Yes, we are. Diamond dick. <laughs> and so much more. We will learn how, how great African Americans use their riches to help build and shape America. I wonder what happened to everybody. Dr. A.C. Jackson, Sheriff McCullough, 
Mr. Woods. Robin D. Brown. Reverend R. A. Whitaker. Wallace House, Jr. Lula Williams. Kelly M. Briggs. Mabel Little. Lawanda Shipman. Bernice Sims. Brielle Brown. Robert Fairchild. Abner Hoffman. O. W. and Emma Gurley. Bishop James Evans. Vanessa Ryland Bontley. O. B. Mann. David Shakes. A. J. Smitherman. Irving Mills. J. B. and Augusta Stratford. Tramel Hale. Sheila Rankin. Dick Rowland. Dick Nelson. And I'm Deborah Washington, the narrator. Take a bye. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for joining us today for this presentation. All right. Well, that was Emancipation Denied by the North Star Players and directed by David Shakes and written by Deborah Washington. We are looking for, so at this point we are going to to have a conversation with uh, Deborah Washington and David Shakes. So Deborah, where uh, I'm going to unmute you? Oh, looks like you're unmuted. How, where did you get the um, the inspiration for for this uh, for this play? You can uh, you can uh, bring your if you wouldn't mind bringing. Um, um, hi, I tried bringing uh, my camera on, but it says that I'm not allowed to. Sounds good. I will make I sure know. that happens. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let's see. There we go. All right. Oh. All right. There we go. Wonderful. And okay, I see he's over there. So let's bring him over. All right. So can you come over? Hey. Oh yeah, you you doing business over there? Yeah. Are y'all set? 
just about him. I'm pulling uh, David over. Oh, okay. Somehow he got clicked over to the to the other side. So, uh -oh. we have all of you. Okay. Says he says David Shakes is rejoining as a panelist. And there, there he is. All right. <laughs> Somehow we got it put across the waters. Let's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So I will trim this and uh, for, for the highlights. So you can, you can, uh, uh oh. All right. Let me bring you in so you can spotlight you. Um. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now I am handing it, handing it over to you. Okay, so uh, the question you asked was, what was my inspiration? Um, so it's, it's amazing where inspirations uh, can come from. So uh, one of the uh, things that was going on is I was doing a play for um, someone else. Um, MJS Productions, and in the play, there was a scene where um, we talked about Black Wall Street. And as we are uh, talking about it, um, I said, oh, I'm going to research that. I had heard about it, but really had never really researched to see, well, what was actually happening? Why is this town considered Black Wall Street? And so in doing the research and looking into the different individuals who um, were instrumental in getting the town started and up and running and a lot of the businesses that were um, um, developed, um, I started thinking, wow, this could really be um, a piece that people would wanna hear about and come see on stage. And so I took on the challenge of trying to create a piece, um, a, a write a play or a script for it. And a year and a half later, I had, finished it off and I shared it with David um, and asked his opinion and what he thought. And he was like, this could work, this could work. And so we took on the challenge to try it. And sure enough, it uh, was very successful when we did it. Um, I think it was three years, four years ago. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, 2017. 17. We were astonished at the success. A lot of people hadn't heard about Black Wall Street, hadn't heard about Tulsa, and uh, we just had a really uh, packed audience uh, for every performance. We went over the top in accommodating people uh, to see this uh, production and to tickle their uh, thoughtfulness, their curiosity, and uh, delving into history themselves. People were very appreciative and very, uh, very joyous, and uh, and also uh, impacted uh, by the story uh, that Deborah put together. And uh, since then, it has aroused a lot of uh, curiosity. Numerous uh, research uh, uh, efforts have been put forth, and uh, various other kinds of uh, productions have 
been have tried to explore uh, the theme of Black Wall Street and what was going on. Because it was, as it was said in the play, it was one of numerous independent African American towns that were instituted throughout uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Florida, uh, North Carolina, uh, and places that we may not know. Also, even uh, Alabama, uh, mm -hmm. their independent towns were uh, were constructed and put together. So we were excited about the project, but it really was an overwhelming uh, success. And we thought it was important to bring it uh, back in some kind of form, even though we're in a pandemic, to bring it back to uh, memorialize the resilience and the strength and the power and also uh, the, the tearfulness uh, at, uh, at the destruction of the town by uh, the uh, white uh, majority. So uh, we felt uh, as though it was poignant, it was important and to uh, bring it up and to, uh, and to let people look and take a moment to look at uh, Black Wall Street. Many people don't uh, recognize or believe that African-Americans can put together something like that, but we've done it numerous times uh, and uh, we continue to strive and to uh, make a headway within the biz business community as well as all other aspects of life in this country. Right, and, and also just very important for um, viewers to, to see the, um, for viewers to see the lives that people had and that people led um, and where they came from. And so as J.B. Stratford and O.W. Gurley talked about their history and how, what brought them to Oklahoma or to Tulsa in the first place, um, giving people uh, some background information and some knowledge about where all these individuals came from and how they ended up in one spot, came together and was able to create this town um, that they could call their own, something to call their own. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if there are um, questions in the chat that um, someone might have or um, and what additional information might we want to know, or do we just flow with it? Yeah. Uh, one of the chat says, viewers asked, was there anything that surprised you in researching this history? Uh, so it, uh, a lot of things surprised me in uh, researching um, the history. One of the first thing was um, the idea of using um, the initials. Um, and the background behind why people use their um, initials or why they name themselves um, names such as bishop or general and uh, those type of things. And so uh, learning that that was their way of getting some type of respect or dignity to let people know that they were there, that they're human, they exist, and they have um, a right to be respected just as well as anyone else um, here in America. And so that was an eye opener for me um, as I uh, continue to see even some of that, you know, happening today where people are using uh, those initials, you know, but understanding the background and um, the reason behind um, uh, the uses of those initials. Um, another thing that um, was a little uh, surprising to me was um, the fact of how the community cared so much for the youth and wanted to ensure that, you know, uh, those youth were educated, trying to help them to understand the importance of uh, being educated, uh, even as they tried to persuade um, Dick Rowland, you know, to stay in school, you know, and, and don't try to make a living off of just shining shoes or, um, the, the women having the, the different meetings and seeing how they could be instrumental in helping out in the community because uh, they didn't have all the organizations as we have today, such as the Urban League or um, the NAACP and things of, of that nature. Um, but just being able to um, use what they have, which was each other, to help continue to um, build and help to develop 
youth into productive citizens for this town or this community that they were uh, putting together and helping them to understand the important role that they play also as youth in this development and being able to carry it on, you know, if, you know, the unfortunate events had not have happened. All right, we see a chat uh, message here saying, have you had a chance to visit this place? I have not, but uh, that is one of, of, of the things that I have on my to-do list is to visit uh, Tulsa and the town of Greenwood. And we were actually trying to set something up to actually do the play there in Tulsa. Um, but then uh, COVID hit and different things didn't fall through. So we're hoping that uh, we can eventually connect with someone in the area. They do have a um, museum there that uh, highlights um, the events that happened and you know, different artifacts. And so we're hoping that we can connect and uh, somehow do, even if it's at one of the uh, college campuses there in Tulsa, uh, the town of Langston that was mentioned, the first African-American uh, African, um, uh, American town developed is still in existence there. So even if, you know, we tuck it to Langston um, because there's a college in Langston as well, uh, that we could probably do it on stage there. But at any rate, we're hoping that uh, we can visit the town as well as do a production there. Yes. And uh, Emancipation Denied should be aired again, very close to or right on the specific dates of the massacre that occurred to uh, memorialize, to give, pay honor to, uh, what happened uh, for a remembrance factor and so that it will not happen again and to also memorialize the resilience of people uh, in Tulsa and throughout uh, Oklahoma and, and indeed throughout this country and across the diaspora, the spirit of African-American, <coughs> the African spirit lives in us and we want to celebrate that. Right, because this year marks the 100th year anniversary of this event that uh, took place. And it's so ironic that um, the dates and the days fall on the exact dates and dates that it happened uh, so many 100 years ago. <clears throat> yes, we're projecting that it should be broadcast through the muck system on those dates, on uh, the, uh, the 30th, uh, the 31st, the 1st, and the 2nd. Those were the dates that the massacre occurred and continued on uh, beyond Memorial Day into the beginning of June. So the plans are to uh, project that, uh, broadcast that through the, uh, through the uh, media means of uh, the MUC, the Multi-Use Community Cultural uh, Center. I think someone asked about the bombing. Uh, can you elaborate? Can the you bomb? elaborate on, on the bombing? Uh, We're bombed. Yes. Yeah. So um, in doing the research of the bombing, um, many accounts from uh, individuals who experienced uh, the rioting, those who survived, um, have said that um, bombs was dropped um, in areas of the town. And um, that's where so many things were on fire and um, different um, businesses were leveled to the ground, turned to ashes. Um, and the reason uh, they believe it was actually uh, the bombing, uh, they felt as though, um, the starting of the fires did not cause uh, as much damage and didn't burn as fast as those things that were actually hit with um, bombs. They heard planes or uh, and different things flying, you know, overhead, and and um, was wondering, you know, of course, you know, what was going on, and that's when they realized that you know they were being bombed. Yes. It's very poignant 
to uh, see that uh, policing began with patty rollers during, during mm -hmm. the ense enslavement period. That's where policing came from. And uh, bombing by uh, aircraft upon a subject below began with Tulsa, Oklahoma, with mm -hmm. the government bombing uh, African Americans attempting to uh, uh, live out the American dream uh, with this country. So we need to look at that and look at uh, uh, where we were, where we are now, and what of the future. That's one of the many reasons, one of the many reasons why we felt as though it was important to present this production. Right. Any other? All right. We can We can go on, but we're proud to present it and uh, congratulate uh, Deborah, the uh, North Star players. We worked on this. We presented it in 2017. We wanted to present a full scale production, but uh, the criteria of the uh, uh, pandemic uh, is limiting audiences, but we thought it was still important to present that. That's why we recorded uh, this at Empire State College uh, campus and we're pleased with our work and we'll continue. Aluta continua, the struggle continues. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, and we thank you so much for uh, viewing it and for your questions you know, and your inquiry and just um, uh, being um, in tune with us and made more aware of uh, the history uh, behind it and some of the events that took place. And we appreciate your support. Thank you so much. We're going to wind it on down. Yes. And we'll turn it back over and to I Ruben.